Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing A Bitter Remedy by Alice Hawkins. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books. And uh, despite those way too many books, uh, this year I was receiving a crime syndicate subscription from Mr B's bookshop in Bath and one of the books that I received for that, uh, I received this back in September as part of that subscription, was A Bitter Remedy by Alice Hawkins and I've been doing uh, standalone reviews of each of these books if you wanted to look back at any of the other books that I've had from the Crime Syndicate you can find those reviews in a playlist which I will link in the description down below. So A Bitter Remedy is what we're going to be talking about today. So firstly of all, what is A Bitter Remedy about? This is a book set in Oxford in Victorian times and it runs over two narrative perspectives. So we have Non, whose full name is Rhiannon Vaughan and she is a young woman from Wales who has taken up a place at the university of sorts as this is Victorian times and this is sort of in the times when uh, women were first being allowed to come to some limited amount of lectures at the university. Yeah, that's Non and she's from Wales. Her main driving force is that she really wants to learn and to prove herself just as worthy of studying as men. The other perspective was that of Basil Rice who does know Non and their perspectives do overlap quite a bit and he is a fellow of Jesus College who is sort of asked to investigate. He was I think a tutor to the person who has died. So the main thrust of this book is that Non um, involves herself when she hears about this suspicious death that has occurred off campus and it's the death of an undergraduate called Sydney Parker in slightly mysterious circumstances. That's the premise of this book. I'm not going to be going into spoilers today only to give like a general overview. So those were the two perspectives we were following. So what did I like about this book first? The second half of this book, and I'll come on to the first half in a minute, was quite twisty. The pace picked up considerably in the second half. I felt like there was a lot of action happening and it was considerably more gripping than the earlier part of the book. The other thing I quite liked was that it was interesting to me that the author had chosen to involve some real life figures from this time and place um, as well as her made up characters. So these included Lewis Carroll, a very interesting woman called Sarah Jane Rees who was also known as I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but Cranogwen. Also Annie Rogers, who was a woman in history who, who was admitted to Oxford College after proving herself on some exams, and a character who wasn't really very much a part of it called John Rees, who was an actual lecturer at Oxford, I believe. I didn't know an awful lot about this time period, so the only one of those I actually knew for certain was a historical figure was Lewis Carroll and it was actually his, not his pen name that was being used in here but I did know his non-pen name. So I did pick up on him and a couple of the others I ended up googling to see if they were um, real characters. There's also an author's note in the back that talks about um, like mixing the real life figures with the characters. Those are the things I did like what was it that I didn't like about this book? So I'm not actually saying that I didn't like this book because I did. It was one of those books where I couldn't quite put my finger on why it wasn't like a really really great read for me. The main thing that I didn't like about it was that it was actually, for me anyway, put downable. And by put downable I mean that I was really enjoying it every time I was actually actively reading it. But whenever I put it down I didn't feel any desire to pick it back up. It wasn't that I actively didn't want to read it. It was that it wasn't, it just wasn't motivating me to want to pick it up and to want to find out more. 
which was a shame. For me, this was too long. It comes in at 375 pages, but I do think that's a little bit long for the story that this had to tell. Within that, it was too long. I would say that at this length, it could have been made to work, but the pacing wasn't quite right. The first half was bogged down with pacing issues for me, and I think that that largely contributed to the being able to put it down for long periods of time. It was not even clear for the first at least 100 pages that the death that had happened in it was even a murder. I mean, I was pretty convinced from the start that it must be a murder because otherwise why would I be reading a murder mystery about it? but it really does just remain like a random death that's been talked about for at least 100 pages, which was a bit slow going for me. And then the second half was almost too pacey. I really much, much preferred the pace of the second half and I could happily have probably read 375 pages at that sort of pace, but the build up in this one was really a bit too slow even for me and I don't mind a slow build in a mystery. The other slight problem that I had with this book is that I felt like I didn't really care for either narrator. I much prefer a thriller or a mystery where I can either relate to or love to hate or just really really like or root for the main character. Neither of these narrators really did an awful lot for me and sometimes there was that annoying thing where I felt the voices were so similar that I sometimes did check back to the title of the chapter to see which of the two narrators it was, which really should never have been happening because one was a much younger female perspective and the other was an older male perspective. Non's main thing is that she's pretty angry all the time and I do understand where that was coming from in her frustration at not being seen as equal to men in this time period and I'm not really going to comment on whether I feel that this was realistic to the time period because I just don't know like there may have been many many very angry women out there who wanted to go to uh, university but I don't know. The problem with, for me with the other perspective Basil is he was just very very forgettable. When I sat down to write the notes for this video earlier I actually couldn't even remember what his name had been and I probably only finished reading this maybe a week. <laughs> to two weeks ago. I don't think even as long as that. One of the things I did really enjoy was the setting of Victorian Oxford. Again, I can't really comment on how accurate it was. I'm not really up on Victorian history, but it seemed authentic. I liked most of the detail of what was going on in Victorian Oxford and setting it within the university was interesting. I did feel like I learned a small amount about the situation with women being admitted into lectures through this story. I did feel like sometimes the author was spending a little bit too much time on the historical and the inequality between men and women and not really enough time on the mystery for my liking personally. I do think that perhaps the pacing that would be good for a thriller of this type was slightly missing as the author tried to spend quite a lot of time on establishing the time period and establishing the injustices of that time period. However, I would not say that this is a bad mystery. There were twists and turns in it that I very much enjoyed. I thought the latter half of it was fairly well pulled off. I did see some of the twists coming, but others um, I was pleasantly surprised by. So this was a slightly above average read for me. I would say that I on the whole enjoyed it despite the flaws for me that I've mentioned, which I appreciate are absolutely not flaws that most people would find with this book. I think there's a lot of you out there that would love this. I am not a huge reader of historical mysteries. That is a subgenre that I would quite like to get into a bit more. And I do have another one from my Mr. B's selection from a different time period of history to try. But if you are a historical mystery reader, do let me know in the comments what you would recommend for a good starting point for a historical mystery. It could be set in Victorian times, I would like to read more of those. It could be set in other times if you like. Probably the books I've read that 
best fit into the historical mystery genre would be the Matthew Shardlake books. I've only read two out of that series but I do plan to continue. Recommend away please. Yes I did think it was enjoyable on the whole and I would recommend this to historical fiction fans, particularly historical fiction fans who don't mind a mystery that can be a little bit grisly or controversial in places. I would recommend checking trigger warnings if you are triggered by sort of maybe medical details would be one thing that I think this book did a little bit of which doesn't bother me but I know might bother some people. I also think that I would recommend this to fans of sort of slow build, slow paced mysteries although the second half may then be a little bit too fast for you if that's you. If you've read this do let me know in the comments, let me know what you thought. I'd love to discuss this book with other people who have read it because there were times when I didn't really know how I felt about it. There was a lot of good points, quite a few things that I just didn't think were really really well carried out but for the most part this was very enjoyable nonetheless. If you have enjoyed this review today please do give it a like, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. As I've said I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you, if you don't have a comment to leave today I would love for you to leave me a emoji <laughs> to represent this book. That's all from me today, thanks for watching and I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now!